What's happening, everyone? It is Mike from the Hardcover Comic here. Hope everyone has been doing well, staying safe and sound uh, in the wild 2020 we've been going through. Today, I wanted to talk about one of my favorite things that's been coming out of DC Comics recently um, that I, uh, I, I've i been enjoying immensely. Um, a lot of these series have been fantastic, and a lot of them are coming to an end. So you've got full runs that you can enjoy, enjoy full stories. Um, and this is the Sandman universe I wanted to talk about. So let's dive into it. Before we get started, please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, this is what we do. We post content regularly. Um, we haven't gone live in a while, but hopefully soon we plan to do that uh, uh, again and, and keep those going because that's uh, it's been a fun time. I miss it. I miss the live streams a lot. Uh, but be sure to also check out our Patreon where we're doing hardcover comic giveaways, digital code giveaways as well as soon as we start getting some more, uh, you know, weekly comics and all that fun stuff. In 2018, the uh, Sandman universe was reignited at DC Comics. It started off with this one shot that's uh, that's sitting up here. Uh, it's basically in this book they they sort of started off every single uh, ongoing series that was going to start up. So you'd have like eight to ten pages, uh, pretty much for every series to sort of give you a taste of what that series is going to be about. Uh, so all the writers for the series were involved in the story along with Neil Gaiman. Uh, so it's really great. It's a continuation of uh, you know Neil Gaiman's run on Sandman. Uh, for those of you that don't know, spoiler alert. It, uh, it ended with uh, Dream replacing himself, but it's not really himself. Uh, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> that's, it's, it's a spoiler, but, um, you know, you got to, if you know, you know. But uh, that, that's sort of how Sandman finished off, and um, DC decided it was time to sort of continue that story and keep evolving on it, which is great, in my opinion. Um, and, and so it started with that. Now let's talk about the first series, uh, The Dreaming. So The Dreaming. The Dreaming, of course, is the... Um, Sort of the, the, the core of all, everything that's happening uh, in the Sandman universe. The Dreaming is, of course, where Dream, it's his kingdom. Uh, it's sort of the, the, the place where he resides and, and everything happens. Um, it's a fantastic, fantastic series. It's written by Simon Spurrier, with the majority of the artwork being done by Bilquis Evely, who is a sensational, amazing, amazing artist. Um, and she really shines in the Dreaming. Her two-page spreads, her one-page uh, spreads, just the way she does panel layouts and, and the detail she has in her artwork and the craziness that she draws in the dreaming um, is absolutely amazing um, and Simon Spurrier you know I've, I've spoken about him in many other videos because I love his work so much he's so great at world building and expanding on ideas and uh, really packing dense stories into into multiple into few issues a handful of issues and and the dreaming is no exception to that style of his writing uh, the whole run was 20 issues long it's completed now so you can read it from start to finish uh, see what's happening in the dreaming what's happening with dream uh, what's happening with other members of the Endless, what's happening with new characters that get introduced, a villain named Judge Gallows who shows up who's absolutely insane, uh, a really great story. Um, and of course, you also see spill spillovers from other series, right? So House of Whispers and Books of Magic and all of those, they all visit and touch upon the dreaming as well. You do also get to see, rev you know, old characters that uh, that you, you love and, and know very well from the Sandman series, like Merv the Pumpkin and Lucian. Uh, Cain and Abel, of course, are very prominent characters within the dreaming. And then there's all these new aspects of the dreaming that are happening. Um, Dream has left. No one knows where Dream is. And they're sort of really trying to keep the kingdom together. They're trying to keep the place from falling apart. And they're trying to resolve all these mysteries, all these mysterious things that are happening suddenly. There are cracks in the sky. There's uh, weird cubes showing up, weird creatures showing up, these nobody creatures. Very, very cool stuff. I highly recommend checking out The Dreaming. 20 issues long, incredible artwork, fantastic story with uh, really, really amazing characters. And if you're a fan of Sandman, this is where you find out what happens after Neil Gaiman's story. Next up, Books of Magic, written by Cat Howard with artwork by Tom Fowler. Uh, for the most part, they do most of the work on the run. There are 19 issues out currently. I haven't really heard about an ending for the series yet, so um, I'm, I'm sure it'll it'll wrap up soon. It seems like all the Sandman Universe titles are wrapping up at this point, but it's a really great run. Um, as opposed to like The Dreaming or Lucifer, which I'll talk about next, it's a, a very quick read, Books of Magic. It follows... Um, Tim Hunter. If you don't know who Tim Hunter is, he's played a pretty big role in the supernatural side of the DC universe, and you get to see a little bit of his history and what's happened with him. Uh, you do also get to see, you know, some of the other co uh, supernatural characters that be, uh, have been involved. Um, basically, the tr trench coat brigade. You know, John Constantine, Mister E, Phantom Stranger. Uh, you get to see how they've interacted with Tim Hunter, and basically, he is 
uh, prophesies to be the greatest magician ever, good or evil. And so there's a whole battle between him, uh, him and himself, you know, is he going to be good? Is he going to be evil? Is he going to live up to this prophecy in general? Um, and you get to introduce to uh, other characters, of course, like this Dr. Rose, who's sort of mentoring him and teaching him, but she may have, you know, motives of her own. It's great. There are so many layers to the story. Of course, he's got friends at school, um, being a high uh, a student. Um, you get to see him interact with bullies and, and friends and family. Um, you get to find out what happened to him and his family, uh, you know, the, the struggles that he's gone through as a boy already at his age, and of course his exploration of the books of magic and, and, and how that's being affected by this group called the Cold Flame that's trying to take him down. It's really, really great. Um, over the 19 issues so far, it's been a beautiful story. A very, very quick read, like I said, but there's a lot of great emotional uh, moments and, and interactions between characters, and you really do get to learn a lot about characters and see them evolve and see how their decisions are, are influencing other characters' lives. Um, really great. I've enjoyed it. The artwork has been great and consistent. Um, not as tight as the dreaming, not as sharp, but uh, very, very good. Nonetheless, very much suits the tone of the book. There's a great recurring character named Matt Hetty as well who shows up here. She's also a Sandman classic character. Uh, so it's really great. I've really enjoyed Books of Magic. A nice quick read, a little on the lighter side and uh, a little more fun than, uh, than some of the other titles in the Sandman universe. Lucifer. Lucifer is going to wrap up with uh, issue number 24. The thing is, issues 19 through 24 are not going to be released as single issues. They're going to be released as an OGN to wrap up the series. Uh, this series was written by Dan Waters with artwork by Max and Sebastian Fiumara. Absolutely magnificent. This is probably my uh, my favorite uh, title after The Dreaming. It would be Lucifer. It's uh, It's one of those series where for the first arc or so, you're really putting the pieces together. Um, Dan Waters is very talented in the way he writes in that um, it's sort of a, like a Grant Morrison style. You sort of have to piece things together over a chunk of time. It doesn't make sense, you know, for the uh, first issue or two. There are a lot of questions and, and every time you get an answer, you have two more questions for that answer. But it's, it's beautifully written, uh, very poetic, very... Um, very haunting. It's a very, very dark book with a lot of really dark themes that get explored. Um, of course, you d you're dealing with the character Lucifer in multiple timelines. You're dealing with his son Caliban. You're dealing with various aspects of, of hell and Lucifer in general. What's really cool is you get to see characters that, um, you know, in human history have sort of been known to be a little satanic and having sold their soul to the devil like Robert Johnson um, and William Blake. So it's, it's very, very cool to see, you know, how they interact with the world as well and uh, and how they sort of influence Lucifer. And you're, you're sort of seeing him piece things together in the present. You're getting flashbacks to what's happened in the past um, in multiple points of time, you know, Lucifer being uh, in the 18th century, you know, all, it's really, really crazy. There are so many things happening um, in, in just the first arc and then things get absolutely crazy after that it's really a fantastic series dan waters has a a very unique way of writing and a very unique way of telling a story that keeps you on the edge of your seat and keeps you wondering and asking questions and thirsty to find out what's happening um, and then he also takes these regular characters regular people and uh, man um what, what some of the characters go through in this story is super, super dark, but it's one of the best titles uh, that I've been reading for the past couple of years. I've really, really enjoyed it. Max and Sebastian Fiumara on artwork. They do a, a absolutely incredible job. They're uh, absolutely amazing artists, and I can't recommend Lucifer enough. It's very dark, though, um, obviously with the title that it has, but really, really great. And if you stick with it, give it the first six issues if you're not hooked by the end of that i apologize but it's uh it's something else it's a wild ride the next series that's part of the same main universe is the house of whispers series this is written by nalo hopkins with artwork by dominique domo staten uh, this is a a really really interesting trippy and bizarre book it's a uh, it's themed. Uh, it's based around this character named Madame Erzuli Freda Dahomey, who is a, a sort of a, a mystic voodoo. I haven't really looked into the, the cultural references and whatnot, but a New Orleans voodoo figure who uh, lives in the House of Whispers, resides within the House of Whispers. Of course, within the uh, Sandman and DC universe, we've known about the House of Secrets, the House of Mystery. I personally hadn't heard of the House of Whispers beforehand, um, but 
this was a great introduction to it. It's a really bizarre book right from page one. You're sort of, again, trying to figure out everything that's happening. You're being overloaded with all this uh, this mythology and this the, the, the culture and, the, the again, the voodoo aspect of it all. It's absolutely crazy. But it, it centers around this, uh, around Madame Merzulli, and then there are also other characters that you deal with, like uh, uh, this family of, uh, of females who, um, through, you know, I, I don't want to spoil too much, but through uh, some... Uh, unknowing mistakes they essentially unleashed a plague um upon the world where where if uh you know if they go up to someone and say do you feel this um that person essentially loses their soul and continues living as a a soulless corpse being i guess um uh, it's kind of tough to explain it makes sense when you read it though uh the artwork's great uh i, I really like domo's artwork it's very stylized at times but it works beautifully for this book and you know you get at the start you get to see this uh, House of Whispers and how it deals with the dreaming and the relationship between characters within the dreaming um, and within Madame Rizzoli's sort of mythos and world. Get introduced to characters like Uncle Monday. You get to see Cain and Abel show up. Um, and you get introduced to the, the family and, and again, the, the whole mythology behind this Madame Rizzoli character. It's really, really fascinating. Um, I believe the series is ending at issue number 22 or 21. So it's wrapping up very, very soon, a couple months or so. I'm excited to see how it ends. It's been a very fun and interesting ride. Um, if you're looking for something very different from superhero comics, check out House of Whispers. The last book in the Sandman universe uh, relaunch has been John Constantine, Hellblazer. Uh, you know, Hellblazer, John, John Constantine has had quite a few series over the, the past couple years with the New 52 and Rebirth, um, which were all decent, not great, not incredible. Um, but decent, and I think there's something special happening now with the Sandman Universe title, uh, written by Simon Spurrier with artwork by Aaron Campbell and Mateus Bargara. So far, we're six issues in. Um, Aaron Campbell did the artwork for the first three, Mateus Bargara did four and five, and now Aaron Campbell was back for issue number six. What I love about the uh, the v changes in the art is that it really matches the tone of the story. The Aaron Campbell issues are dark, they're very creepy, very supernatural, very horrific. And then the issues with Mateus Bergara were a little more lighthearted, getting to see, you know, John's lighter side dealing with the hippie and uh, and his his hippie version of magic was absolutely hilarious, was a great time. And uh, Mateus's artwork really made it uh, lighthearted and exciting and vibrant. Um, whereas, again, Aaron Campbell, the stories um, are, are very dark, dealing with dark, dark magic and uh, really the the frightening side and the psychological side of magic and uh, and that sort of supernatural horror that that John Constantine really was was created out of right and it's really magnificent i think this is the closest it's felt to a hellblazer title since the original hellblazer series um, the new 52 and rebirth stuff felt really superhero-y and kind of run-of-the-mill supernatural but i think what simon spurrier has been doing with this uh with this Sandman Universe title, this black label version of it is uh, absolutely great. Like I said, it's a black label title, so you're getting curse words, you're getting violence, you're getting a little bit of nudity. So definitely not for kids, definitely not for kids. And uh, it's really coming back to the roots. It feels like that original Hellblazer title. I cannot wait to see what Spurrier has in store for us coming in the future. But that's it. Those are all the Sandman Universe books that have been coming out. Aside from Hellblazer, they're all coming to a conclusion if they haven't already. For The Dreaming, there is a new 12-issue miniseries starting written by G. Willow Wilson. I forget who the artist is going to be on it. I apologize. But it's going to be a 12-issue maxi-series mini, whatever you want to call it, called The Dreaming, The Waking Hours. That's coming out soon. At least it should be. I, I don't think there has been any cancellation of that. Um, with the COVID situation, but very excited to see that because I did enjoy the dreaming a lot. It'll be nice to have all this, the, this Sandman universe mindset once it's all said and done. And uh, be sure to check out Hellblazer 6 issue so you can easily get caught up um, and find out what's been happening with John Constantine. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you've read any of these titles, what you think of them. If there are any Sandman universe titles you would uh, hope to see in the future um let me know what, what those would be too um you know there there's so many great characters in this universe and there are so many you know stories that can be told it's it's dreams it's fantasy it's whatever you could possibly come up with and it's it's what makes the sandman universe so damn exciting because it's the absolute peak of imagination in my opinion um and creative storytelling from what i've experienced myself 
Um, but anyway, I'm going to stop rambling for you guys here. Thank you very much for tuning in. Please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell to let you know whenever we post a new video, which is typically 1130 um, every day, every other day. Uh, but thank you guys very much for tuning in. If you're interested in hardcover comic giveaways, check out our Patreon. Uh, there's a link down in the description below. Um, hardcovers, omnis, absolutes, whatever it is. The more money we make, the more we give away. It's awesome. And uh, that's about it, guys. Stay safe. Uh, stay clean. And uh, I'll be, we'll talk next time. You stay classy, Internet.